Hello folks. Welcome to another beautiful Sunday afternoon here in Ontario. Now traditionally in this afternoon I'd be up in the next lake fishing through a hole in the ice to try and catch a lake trout or two. But with this wind that's blowing and with the foot of slush that's on top of the ice and the foot and a half to two foot of snow on top of that, it makes for some pretty difficult travel, especially for our little snow machine over there. So today we're going to do a video on our solar system. I've had lots of questions on how big is it, how big does it need to be. So let's first of all, I'll show you our panels and tell you a little about them. This is our array of solar panels to power the cottage. And up until last year, we only had the two on the right, which are 240 watts each. The two on the left, a little newer technology, they're 335 watts each. And the ones on the right we've had for, I think we're going into our 11th year with them. They still work wonderfully. The only time we ran out of electricity, when we couldn't put enough charge in the batteries, is sometimes in the fall and November when we get a couple of weeks of really dark, dreary weather, or the same thing in the spring sometimes in early April, late March, when there's not much sun. So we added the two on the left, and I'm actually going to replace the two on the right this summer as well. They're 11 years old, and I can add another couple hundred watts just by replacing them with the same panels that we have on the left. Let's head inside and we'll show you what our inverter and our charge controller system looks like. In the center of the screen is the combiner box. On the left-hand side, the conductors from the sets of panels come in and you notice there's a couple of DC breakers and then the output out of the right hand side comes over here all the way to our charge controller. The charge controller's output is adjusted to match our set of batteries. There's a simple set of dip switches underneath the cover, they're either on or off. We set them to the proper place to match to the type of battery we have, the capacity of the battery we have, and the array of solar panels that we have. And it comes out of there goes down to the bottom of the inverter and is connected to our batteries. And this is our battery bank. We have four L16 6 volt batteries wired in series to give us 24 volts. They're just simple lead acid flooded batteries and they work very very well. This is our second set of batteries. The first set lasted us nine years and then one started to fail so better than replace one we replaced them all. We are very pleased with these batteries. And interesting enough, they're made in Canada. They're Rolls batteries made in Spring Hill, Nova Scotia. And from all the solar people that I know, these are one of the most popular and certainly one of the highest quality batteries on the market. Now the battery bank is an integral part of any solar system. It's really just a storage device for the energy. When we turn on a high load, like say our well pump, which draws about 96 amps DC, our solar system does not produce 96 amps. So we take 96 amps from the batteries to power the load for just a few, you know, under a minute of course. And then the batteries get recharged with that steady charge over time. And when there's no sun at all, a nighttime or on cloudy, rainy, wet days, this battery bank provides more than enough to meet our needs. And we have both, we have a split panel, we have a 120, 240 volt panel in the cottage. And as far as maintenance for the batteries go, you'll notice the jug of distilled water there in the floor that's frozen solid. We keep the, the electrolyte levels topped up. You'll also see my little measuring cup that I used to pour. It works really well. And we clean the terminals, and four times a year we equalize the batteries. Really all that means is we put in an excessive charge with our generator which boils the electrolyte, gets rid of any stratification or sulfation on the lead plates. It's very, very important that you do that. In a vehicle, batteries get shaken up all the time as you move and you drive. Not here. They sit still. So the density levels of the electrolyte can vary and we can end up with poor performance if we don't equalize the batteries. And this MagnaSign inverter gives us true sine wave 120 240 volt supply to the cottage. So we come out of our inverter across to a sub panel and you notice on there it says shed light receptacle, cottage, well pump, shore power. That's all the output of our inverter panel here. And let's see what kind of charge we're getting on this really overcast winter's afternoon. As you can see there we have 6 amps at 28.5 volts going into those batteries. Now the batteries are almost completely charged because we really don't use much in the winter time. 
But isn't that amazing? Even at an extremely overcast afternoon like this, we're capturing 171 watts of energy through those solar panels. Folks, that's our 1.2 kilowatt solar system in a nutshell. It more than meets our needs. I get to run power tools, and it changes our cottage from kind of an off-grid camp in the bush to what feels like living the life of luxury in the Canadian bush. Folks, if you have any thoughts or questions, leave them in the comments below. And I must say, I don't pretend to be an expert at anything. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video, folks. Thanks so much for watching, and we look forward to seeing you again on Out of the House with Paul.